energy today and tomorrow. I'm Irina Cordon, your host for today. And I'm very glad to welcome you at this event. This is the first one of, I hope, a nice row of events. And we are here, we are present at the birth of something new. So let me give you a short overlook of what we will do in the next two, uh, three and a half hours. We have five teams here who are present to take part in the contest. They have got a certain task, they have done a lot of work in advance, and now they have a possibility, an opportunity to present their findings and results. So our program will start in a few minutes with presentation of projects. Since we have five teams here, you will hear five different presentations. After each one, our esteemed Judiciary Committee will have an opportunity to ask questions, to ask questions to each team. After all the teams have done their work on the stage, and I hope they will do well, I'm sure they will do well, we will have a kind of blitz tournament. You can also call it a quiz. And this is a unique opportunity to participate also for the audience, because you will get a kind of device to vote for right, for correct answers. After the Blitz tournament is over, we will have a kind of intermission to give our Judiciary Committee a possibility to discuss the results and to prepare their statements, and for all of you to have some refreshments outside. We then come back to our conference hall to have a ceremony, an award ceremony, and I think um, it will be quite thrilling because we have five really good teams here. And till the absolute end of the story, we will not know who is the winner. But what is the subject of the competition? We have here students of diff master students of different directions. Some engineering students, some economy students. So what can they do together, even in a mixed team? Yes, they can perform a very complex task of analyzing a situation of a company, analyzing a real business situation. But they don't work in a company yet, they're just students. So the situation will be a bit hypothetical. You know, we have a case study here, and it is a case study contest. And the case study as it is, it suggests already with its name, at the crossroads, describes a company, which name is NP, a company which is in a very difficult situation because the market is changing. And the market is changing everywhere and always. But this certain company stands on the crossroads and has to make a decision, a very important decision, where to go, how to do business in the upcoming 15 years. Somehow um, it's crazy. We have five different teams which have decided upon a strategy for one company, one certain company, but it's a hypothetical situation. And just imagine what would be the world without hypothetical situations. It would be very stable, well-prepared, machine-like, and boring. I think it would be boring because it would be a world without creativity. I hope those five teams will show you that they have a huge amount of creativity. Because you always need creativity to solve any situations. First of all, to solve hypothetical situations, first you have to imagine what happens there. Two months ago, approximately two months ago, 30 young men and women got a call and they accepted the challenge. Thank you, guys. <laughs> they accepted the challenge. Yes, please give a big hand to our participants. 
They really deserve it. They really deserve it, believe me. They accepted the challenge and formed five teams. We now have three nationalities here. We have two German teams, we have two Russian teams, and we have one team from the Netherlands. I will introduce the teams to you a bit later. So those young men and women formed a strategy for a company named NP. You probably never heard about this company. Although all of you are more or less in a gas and oil business, you never heard the name NP. Yes, it's a hypothetical one, but you know, with a little bit of imagination, we can really feel it as if it's real. I think now it's, a, it's time to inform you who are those brilliant, brave, and very, very creative 30 young men and women. Let me start with the introduction in the order of appearance of these teams later on the stage. Let me introduce our first team, Team Fangastic, which hails from Germany. And the team captain is Frederick Reimann. Frederick? Dear audience, dear Judiciary Committee, I ask you to give a really big hand to this team because they are first. They have to break the ice. They are a bit more nervous than others. Here in the conference hall, they are even more nervous than me. And this means something, believe me. <laughs> but I know they have done a very good preparation, so they will succeed. I, I would like to introduce also other members of the team. It's anne Christine Kiefer, Matthias Papert, Frederick Berg, Raphael Marian Zepanek, and Nikolai Marek. Our second team hails from Russia, and its name is Neft. Please give a very warm welcome to our second team. The team leader is Gleb Golubtsov. Other team members are Yekaterina Avdienka, Tatiana Tortusova, Igor Kachura, Alexander Tsarenko, and Elizaveta Yermalenko. Uh, by the way, when I show you a slide of a team, I come back to you. Don't worry, my dear Dutch friends. I'll come back to you. When I show a slide of a team, what you see on the top of the slide is their motto. So, with the motto, combined heat and power, please welcome the Dutch team, Team Orange. This team is led by Bernd Huisman. There's other team members are Eduardo Rogeri, Henry Antoine Bartlett, Adam Zrodlowski, Lee Tevesen, Nelike van der Steen. Our fourth team has a very nice slogan, which is also a very nice abbreviation. We just see you are a family, guys. <laughs> the team leader name is Maria Monachova. Other team members are Jana Shcherbatyuk, Fatima Yanbaeva, Ayul Teleshova, Leonid Droyan, and Ildar Bazirov. And you know, last but not least, we have a team, another team from Germany, which has chosen a very nice name, NP. NP is the name of our hypothetical company, 
I think it's the first version. Normally, if you buy a software somewhere and 2.0 uh, is more or less the first version, then we have 7.0, 7.3 or whatever. <laughs> so I believe even if it's the first one, it should be a really good one. So please give a very warm welcome to Isabel Luther, the team leader of the <laughs> Team NP 2.0. Manuel Kluge, Paul Kunz, Christoph Bender, Paul Niemann and Stefan Schlich, Schicht. But since we have a contest, a competition here, what would a competition be without Judiciary Committee, without a jury? You know, in real life, we also have jury all the time. Disregarding what we do, we always set a kind of jury behind us. As a company performing on the market, on the real market, we also have a jury which name is the market. And we can get a prize there. Its name is success. I wish success to all of those teams. I think you wish it too. Now, I'm very proud for the opportunity to announce our esteemed the members of our esteemed Judiciary Committee. The chair of our Judiciary Committee is Mrs. Jelena Tilegina. <laughs> from Gupton State University of Oil and Gas. Mr. Uwe Fieb. <laughs> from E.ON Global Commodities SE. Mr. Maxim Niedzwiecki from Gazprom. Mr. Gerd Graving from Gastera. Mrs. Natalia Trifonova from St. Petersburg State University of Economics. And Mr. David Salfati from NG. Whatever competition we have, we participate, we always ask ourselves, what is going on in the heads of the jury? How can we perform in the way to satisfy them? So as, as every jury, our Judiciary Committee has also some assessment metho methods to evaluate the performance of our teams. So let me give you a short overview of the total assessment methodology. We have three parts of the competition. First of all, there will be scores for the project presentation and the question and answer session for each team. There is a potential of gaining at maximum 60 points because each jury member can give you from 1 to 10 points, guys. In addition, up to 60. There will there also will be scores for the Bliss tournament at maximum 30 points. You can reach these 30 points if you give us six correct answers for six questions. And there is a certain, uh, certain additional score from the Judiciary Committee, which is also maximum one to 10 points, or maximum 10 points. This score just shows you how likely it would be that you as a team will be hired to solve a problem in a real business world. Because we have here senior experts from the industry, also from the academia, and they already know what should the team perform like to be efficient, to be successful. So you will get a score also for, for this, let's say, probability of your success in your real business, in your real working life. To assess the case study, there are a number of criteria. And I don't want to read the whole slide. You can do it much quicker than me. The thing is, you have those single merits but only all of them together 
will give you an understanding how good you are as a team, how good have you performed. So I think all of us, after we know who are the team members, after we know who are our esteemed jury members, are eager to know what is the result of this case study. It means for us also that we have to ask our first team to come and take the stage. Guys, you are first ones. I wish you all the luck and all the success. You will do a job which is more difficult than the job of others. That's why, dear audience, please support this team with a very, very warm applause. Dear audience, dear Judiciary Committee, we see a board of directors of the company named NP. What you see here is a decisive board meeting where the company strategy will be formed. So, dear Team Fangastic, the stage is yours. Members of the board, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for having us today. We are here to determine actions and priorities in the context of the latest developments for NP. Anne Christine and I brought our four analysts to go, we're going to show you how to transform NP into an international successful company. Uh, this presentation will consist out of three parts. First, the strategic analysis. Second, the long-term strategy. And third, the investment proposal. Anne Christine is going to start. Thank you, Frederick, for the introduction. So let's come to the strategic analysis. Um, to identify the global challenges, trends, and influencing factors that affect us as an integrated oil and gas company, we used the five forces and pesto analysis. So thereby, we discovered the market intensity as the most important issue and identified multiple factors that influence the current investment landscape and making adequate forecasts nearly impossible. Um, we use these findings to construct our house of global challenges, trends, and factors of the energy industry, which I start to build up now. Um, we define the first challenge as the increasing market intensity. This challenge um, arises from issues like um, the invasion of the shale, gas, and oil, which leads, among others, to um, the currently low level of oil and gas prices. The second most important challenge is the growing energy demand, especially due to the um, expected population growth in the development country and the growth in the, um, <laughs> in the standards of living. So the last challenge is the change in consumer preferences, um, meaning the increasing demand and political incentives in regard to green products. Many trends derive from these challenges, for example, the new energy mix and the improvement of efficiency. These trends are affected by many factors. So at the moment, the most important factors are the fluctuations in the global resource space, the price dynamic, and um, in, uh, uncertainties due to geopolitical risks. So now this slide illustrates the comparison of the global trends with the Russian trends. As you can see, 
um, the Russian trends generally correspond to the global trends. Um, we identified the renewable energy sources as the one thing that differs from the global trends because they are much um, less pronounced in Russia. So going further in our strategic analysis, the next logic, logical step is um, to examine um, <laughs> the competitiveness and the business portfolio of our company. The competitiveness we analyzed via the SWOT analysis. Um, this shows us that we have a lot of strengths and opportunities, which gives us a quite good competi uh, competitiveness. And uh, the weaknesses and threats are mainly the overall challenges the whole industry has to face. The next point is the ADLSC metrics, which allows us to analyze our business portfolio uh, in the context of the competitive position and the industry life cycle stage. Putting these together and having in mind our uh, before identified um, challenges, trends, and issues, we conclude that we have a well diversified and um, good performing portfolio which we should hold and further improve and push in terms of our gas position and international presence, which we will achieve due to our long-term strategy, which now will be explained by Frederick. Thank you, Anne Christine. Talking about the long-term strategy, at first you have to keep in mind the present. You can see on the left-hand side the range of activities for a company in the present, which is formed as a pyramid. We have a low focus on gas, a medium focus on fuel sales, but these two were the main drivers for a really good result in the last year. So we suggest in our long-term strategy to transform this pyramid into a diamond, diamond and put more focus on the fuel sales and especially on the gas. This portfolio uh, diversification should be reached by our long-term strategy. You will have to ask how and when, by which steps are we going to fulfill these goals. Our strategy is based on three phases. The first phase is the consolidation. It consists of two main fields of activities. First, intelligent cost reduction with portfolio optimization. Second, improvement of efficiency by standardizing processes and product marketing. And with a, f with a focus on building a flexible financial foundation for the future actions, which will be started in the second phase, the improvement. We will have to invest into the gas industry, make acquisitions and geographic expansion. And the last one, the expansion. Of course, in the future, we will have to implement new technologies as well as to improve our internationalization. But we must not go for the long-hanging fruits in the first phase to endanger our goal to develop a sustainable international energy company. So by the means of f uh, creating a sustainable financial, port financial port foundation, we sold, our, uh, we sold the oil assets. And by this money, you asked us to make an investment proposal. So. We suggest to enter the NGV market by four elements. The first element and the most crucial one is the creation of demand. We will be offering a no interest loan for car conversions to CNG. This is mainly due to the necessity to react to the consumers by uh, walking the extra mile, as we want to call it. This will be a competitive advantage towards others. The second one, we will be uh, producing our, our LNG in a modular LNG plant that is made to meet the latest demands. And third, our NGV fueling stations. We will transform our 40 of our existing fueling stations into multi-fueling stations in the first step and furthermore build 300 new NGV 
uh, stations in the central Russian region, mainly focused on Moscow, because it has one of the highest vehicle per capita rates in the whole world. And the last one, which is a really nice side effect of our project, is the gasification of the rural areas. Mother-daughter systems supplied by LNG will be able to gasify areas that were cut off the grid before. So. You can see our estimates for the market development, which leads us to our customer segmentation. Our, bigger cus our biggest group of customers will be the CNG fleets, professional driving companies such as taxi drivers, car rentals, and transportation. And for, additionally, the CNG private conversions. And lastly, as you can see from the development, the LNG trucks. This will be fulfilled by our marketing strategy. We have a, we have a predefined market itinerary where we, can see, where we predefined all return rates from our approaches. And second, our well-established fuel brand. We, will, we are well known for good quality and have a high reputation among the customers, which facilitates it for us to implement new technology. And third, the customer retention. As a part of the loan program, the Customers will repay their loan by fueling their cars at our stations for the, gap, for the uh, petroleum fuel price. The gap between the petroleum fuel price and the CNG price will be used to cover the loan. And let's, it's adaptable for new markets. The last one, of course, for every one of you, how is our money spent? We have four big spend expenses, and we aim to spend 1.4 billion euros and we estimate 9% return on investment by 2022. So to wrap it up, you can say it's a highly competitive market and it's mainly focused on the buyer's market now. So you have to walk the extra mile, but there's no traffic on the extra mile. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Tim Fangastic. Thank you for a great job. Dear jury members, you have seen this team has performed a very solid analysis of the market and they also suggested strategies. I hope you have um, enough material now to, uh, to make your decision, but maybe you also want to ask questions. It's the opportunity Absolutely. to do this. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your comprehensive analysis and presentation. It was very good, interesting. Uh, as far as I understand, the, your target is to become a sustainable development into international energy company, international energy company. That's right. So which market are you targeting then? Uh, building an LNG plant, which market you are looking for? Domestic in Russia or LNG plant will serve for the international exports? The project is focused on the set of central Russia, so the LNG plant will be built in a strategic location close to our uh, gas stations near to Moscow. Right. And then what kind of international business you are? The international business is the adaptability of this program or project for other regions in Russia and, of course, in the world. So we are looking forward to uh, implement this project not in Russia, but also in the neighboring countries and, of course, in Asia. And what are the major risks for this project? The major risk, we, we are aiming to uh, bypass a lot of risks by the missing demand, by creating the demand on our own. So uh, most of the risk is the, the loan defaults, of course, but our market itinerary gave us the return rate. So we say, we're going to approach 5,000 companies and we expect a return rate of 5%. And in the next step, we, we expect 10% of those to ask for a proposal and then 20% of those who finally um, sign the deal with us. So if we don't fulfill the rates, we will be able to follow each itinerary and see where we didn't fulfill our rates and this gives us a guide to management and a guide to action so we will know, okay, we didn't fulfill our goal of 20% here so there must be something wrong with our approach in this step. But do you see any competition at this market? Of course there is competition. So how but do you value it? 
we are already uh, highly qualified in entering um, the, fu the fuel market and our, our gas station system is well known and our, our brand is, uh, has a high reputation. By this we expect and we know that we can, we can gain competitive advantage over the others, over the other competitors. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Welcome. Uh, we are already well established in the um, retail market and um, uh, we know there are some competitors there like um, Gazprom and um, Rosneft um, for example but we are on the early stage now and we can now enter the market um, and we have some advantages because of our uh, cost structure and so we think that we are will be successfully to enter the market. But why your cost structure is better than to the already existing competitors, what are the differences? Uh, so we have seen in the past that um, our processes are um, are better, and then um, that we um, so it's coming out from the past, and um, we think we can transfer to the future. While but we you need to build a new plant, which is very expensive and currently very risky. And your competitors, are, they already have their established. So it's, uh, for us, in the first steps, we uh, have to, to uh, buy the, uh, the LNG because we have built our plant modular and will f uh, fit it to demand and also to, uh, to, um, to fit the risks. And this modular way gives us the chance to be flexible in, in the later stages and not uh, invest this large money in one big uh, right. in one big plant. Okay. I have a question. Did I catch it uh, right that you said you will sell all oil assets? Uh, it's um, in the uh, case study. It's in the um, we have to sell the oh, oil okay. assets. It's uh, mm. it's not for our uh, this decision. It's decision from case study. Okay, the, I got that. Mm -hmm. Every team has to deal with this. Mm -hmm. uh, one question to the loans, uh, which you want to give to the uh, future clients for converting their cars. Uh, how are you going to handle the uh, fluctuations in interest rates in the market compared to your zero percent approach? Willst du? This, uh, the question was how we... Uh, well, you're going to give the loans over a longer period, a okay. couple of years, and in between the interest rates and the market rates uh, fluctuate. Um, we are, uh, Freddy, okay. Uh, we said our main focus is on the CNG fleets. CNG fleets have a high driving range each year. So by the price gap between the petroleum fuel and the CNG, the loan is expected to be paid off within two or three years, and of course we will have to deal with this kind of issue by uh, implementing um, like, uh, safety nets that we will charge extra after a certain amount of time. Also, we have to deal with our customers fueling their vehicles at other AGV stations for the regular that CNG was not price. Uh, what I was getting at. I was the opportunity uh, for you would still, be uh, to give a loan to a bank focus and get an on interest rate instead of giving it to p uh, potential customers. And if you do that over a longer period, you must have an assumption of what the average interest rate is that you could have gotten if you would have uh, given the loan to a bank, for example. And then that is the cost you have for these loans. And then you recoup the cost through the difference between the petroleum product and the uh, CNG, right? So did you have any assumption on that? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. the, so I'm getting at the opportunity cost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yes, you're right about the opportunity costs. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the first step in our long-term strategy. And um, the goal is to increase the demand so, um, yeah, it's focused on the long term and that we get to, to earn the profit later. So what is your long-term price assumption for oil versus 
gas in form of CNG. Can you, repeat, can you repeat the question? Well, if you implement uh, an NGV station chain, then you must have an assumption on the price for the gas in comparison to the price for petroleum. Yeah, we uh, have to we calculate with the forecast, uh, and um, we have this uh, the price for CNG 15 rubles. And this uh, price for the petrol is 30 rubles. So this difference we put it to calculate the, to, that they pay their loan back. And then we have to, to uh, we have calculate the, uh, the price dynamic and uh, so that they change price. We uh, reflected the forecast for gas price or CNG price and, and uh, gasoline price and we have to we try to to build this so, so dynamic you, uh, uh, flow for, of the uh, loans i have a question the uh, in the line of, of uber fip also um looking to the exposures uh, the, the 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 cost would come up uh, if if really the product go, goes on uh, not foreseen maybe uh, that's one of these one of the the issues on, in in the cost based structure so the exposure my real question is, uh, getting along your trick of the prices mentioned by Uber to have captive clients, I think that's a brilliant idea to have captive clients, and that brings me to the next step, is that if you look to return of investment, 5%, that's damn low. That's a regulated market. You have captive clients, and you should press a little bit more to have a higher percentage, in my view. So my question is, if 5% is the, is the low case, of that would be even much more or higher. Yeah, we uh, calculated uh, in, in kind of safety net. We have made three cases and we are uh, defensive calculating. So with a low margin of, of our uh, L CNG and LNG, and so this uh, 5% in the medium case, it's maybe uh, in an uh, earlier stage, in, in, a, in an earlier year. And so we have uh, much space up and uh, we can uh, we have here the safety case of our calculation I'd like to <clears throat> I'd like to dig further the 5% uh, issue so if I understand correctly the situation you would sell all the oil asset to finance this move to CNG uh, or NGV basically you had some shareholders that bought shares in the company for high risk, high risk, high reward profile of oil production. And now you need to switch to a very low risk, low reward infrastructure business. How do you manage uh, uh, shareholders in this case? Dear Mr. Salfati, I ask you kindly to speak loudly because it's not um, ah, okay. heard on the stage. Fair enough. I'm very sorry. <laughs> Would you please? So, so my question was. Yeah. You were an um, oil producing company, you will sell the assets and switch and switch to uh, natural gas vehicle business, mostly infrastructure business. 5% uh, lower risk, low reward uh, risk profile. How do you manage your shareholders to move from a high risk, high reward profile to an infrastructure business, low risk, low reward? You need to manage your shareholders, basically. So actually, we don't sell all of our oil assets. Um, that for the first, it is just that we have uh, some strategic, strategic one. Um, so if you have seen the, in the uh, sheet, there was um, that oil is in our future portfolio, plays also a role, but it don't plays a major role. And um, if you just see into the future, and we have our prognosis, our strategic analysis for the future, is that gas plays a major role and a bigger role than, uh, than oil. So therefore, we can convince our shareholders to invest into the future, and they will reward in the future. Okay. Also, we are increasing the gas in the fuel sales, which were responsible for our good result in the last year, in, uh, in contrast to the oil, which did not contribute as much as the fuel sales, mainly of uh, premium products and our gas production. This is uh, easy mathematics to uh, convince the uh, shareholders that we improve the areas where we are already getting a lot of return in. 
Yes, that's that's debatable because your your shareholders now request 10 to 15 percent for an oil business, and you need to convince them to switch to a five percent business. No? And that, uh, that's uh, the five percent is in 2020 when we are still developing our business. In the last slide, you can see that we are aim in our moderate case to have nine percent by 2022, and it's growing. So. We have to, uh, the, the demand has to develop, and we are very confident that by our, pro by our program, we are able to push this development and boost it to uh, increase the development and uh, retain the customers to our fuel stations. And if they, when they pay off the loans, they will just pay the normal CAG price, so they will likely to stay at the station, at the gas stations that they used for the last two or three years. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to change the atmosphere of our uh, query, and my query is very, very small. Uh, please, I see uh, the uh, team uh, with a uh, um, remarkable, remarkable name, uh, namely NP. And uh, what do you think about your possibility to work in this company, NP, and to realize the uh, strategy, long-term strategy for most? Would you please so no. kind to repeat the question and maybe we can make it a bit louder because it's really okay. difficult Let's to understand it. Our, <laughs> we cannot hear you to, to do something to help us on the stage because we cannot hear you really clearly. Um, may I ask you, Mrs. Trifonova, to... Okay, <laughs> I'm ready. To uh, my, uh, my query is connected with your willingness to work in this company, namely company NP. That's all. We are already working for MP. <laughs> <laughs> and we come to work with a smile every day. So <laughs> I think that's all I have to say. Okay. Thank you very much. And if you don't mind, the final question is from... We have uh, one more. Yeah, just uh, for, uh, for this diagram, could you explain the mathematics and also uh, say uh, about the financial result? Because uh, if we look at this diagram, we, s uh, we understand how to spend money, but not how to earn them. <laughs> yeah, okay. Then we need a little help from uh, our... We have a backup slide for this, and uh, Tanya has to click on it. <coughs> Wait a second. This, uh, Tanya, the slide up, up and right, there's uh, our deeper detailed uh, calculation. Yeah, yeah, with the profit. Uh, we have uh, our return or our profit is increasing and it, the steps with uh, CNG conversion cars, other CNG cars that will, will uh, fueling their cars by us, the rural CNG and or LNG, and then in uh, a few years, uh, or uh, starting at 2018, the LNG truck that come to and uh, in the market and there's a big potential to pay their profit to us and in 20 uh, yeah there oh, okay here here you see the the detailed uh, calculation so you see the the uh, blue is the uh, invest and so they it's decreased and our uh, profit increase and in 2021 and 2022 there are no profit from loans they are already paid back and that's uh, the all its profit from our operating uh, unit and we are getting profits from cng cars lng cars uh, lng trucks and rural cng areas is okay Dear jury members, we see that you have a lot of really interesting questions, which means for us and for all the other teams that you really listen carefully to the presentations. Thank you for this. Thank you for the team number one, for the team Fangestic. Since your name is Fangestic, it sounds like fantastic. And I think being the first one on the stage, without no expectations of what will come, 
you've done it really well. Thank you very much. Thank you. You may now go back to the seat. Now, please give a warm welcome to our second team, to the team with the name Neft. As with everything which starts first time in our life, we always have to check out what is it, how it works, and we need creativity to solve the problem. So we have seen our first team has shown creativity, our other teams will show creativity, and even our operators, they also show creativity, giving us, bringing us such devices. Thank you for your help, guys. Thank you. So, so since we have already <laughs> gave a warm welcome to our team NEFT, I ask you, dear friends, to start with your presentation. Yep, Go. thank you. Good afternoon, dear colleagues and members of Jury Committee. We are the new explorers of fuel technology, and I am glad to introduce uh, our team presentation dedicated to the case study here for the YASD in St. Petersburg International Gas Forum. So keep up, keep calm for 10 minutes and drill on. Our presentation will be divided into three parts. The first part is devoted to industry analysis. Then we regard to uh, the diversification strategy. At the end of our presentation, we present our project in the frame of identified strategy. Distinguished colleagues, uh, let's start with external environment and industry situation. In current turbulent situation, we should take into consideration all the factors and trends that can influence the developments of our company. We identified six directions for all trends that have the most noticeable dynamics. So, then, uh, according to expert opinions, we ranked our trends using three main factors. Influence, time, and level uncertainty. Influence shows the strength of a trend in the industry. Time factor conveys the impact of a trend over the same period. And the level of certainty reflects the development nature of a trend. As a result, we have the following ranking list you can see on the chart. On the basis of our analysis, we identified three key world trends vital for NP company. First of all, the share of natural gas in the structure of the old energy balance is, back, is expected to increase. Development of LNG opens prospects for internalization of gas market. And finally, technological improvement and environmental issues contribute to the growth of CNG market. Well, Russian energy sector has its own specificity. As, as you know, during past year, oil and gas industry, which takes more than 50% of world energy consumption, faced two considerable changes associated with Shell Revolution in the USA. Russia has the biggest gas reserves and included into the top 10 oil reserves. At the same time, it has huge potential for developing of Arctic prospects, Bajenov, Ashimov, and Turonian formations. Despite active development of renewable sources of energy, so far it has quite limited application due to big conventional fuel base. Uh, second block of our presentation is devoted to NP's diversification strategy. Uh, to minimize negative consequences of diversification process, we should base all uh, new NP's activities on its core competencies. So we used a uh, resource-based view to formulate two core competencies of uh, NP. And they are uh, efficient upstream operations and downstream operations, including distribution network of products under unified brand. Uh, indeed, a uh, company has direct access to consumers, uh, hardly to imitate infrastructure, and rare access to uh, cost-efficient technologies as well as to huge reserves. So to succeed and guarantee sustainable advantage for new projects, NP should uh, base them on these core competencies. For the analysis of uh, SS portfolio of the company, we used um, ADL metrics. We point, uh, pointed out the current assets in white color and uh, strategic assets for diversification in green color. And as you can see, there, are, uh, there is a very favorable position of uh, compressed natural gas, uh, combining attractive uh, market and potentially strong competitiveness. 
We place all our potential assets on the map of Russian Federation, and as you can see, our target region is Central Russia. Taking into consideration the results of retrospective analysis, core competencies, as well as asset diversification of the company, we identified key directions for our strategic development. This strategy provided the basis for target portfolio. So, as you can see, the main zones of our interest are gas motor fuels and technology ventures. And now we want to present our project dedicated to uh, the uh, strategy that we identified. So, the, the goal of our project is to build the CNG retail infrastructure in central Russia. In the project, we have uh, several limitations. First, uh, territory, central Russia. Second, uh, the start on uh, return on investments is no later than the year of 2022. And finally, the oil budget is 2 billion euros. The life cycle of the project, you can see on the slide. We begin our project Im implementation with the gas station design. Then we are planning to complete reconstruction of 120 existing stations to make them multi-fuel. Uh, at the same time, we are going to construct 320 new CNG stations with appropriate infrastructure and 280 re-equipment service centers. 11% of our project budget will be invested in research and development through our NP Technology Ventures Fund. The main target of this open innovative program is to bring together entrepreneurs and technology startups from and outside the energy industry. We focus on finding cost-effective ways to deliver technologies that the industry needs. In the lower part of this slide, two maps are presented. The right map is gas pipelines, and the left one is federal highways. Overlapping of two these maps clearly shows the zone of our interest for gas motor fuels development. It is central Russia market. We are expecting to use our own source of gas from GPP in Hanty Mansisk region, and we are supposed to construct most of CNG stations along the federal highways to maximize the demand for our product and close to gas pipelines to minimize the infrastructure costs. As you know, it's very important for the project and the evaluation to make financial risk analysis. For our financial analysis, we developed the DSV model. To make a decision of the implementation of the investment project, it's important to analyze and calculate such results like net present value, uh, payback period, and profitable index. As you can see, NPV is greater than zero, and profitable index is greater than one, so we can say that our project is financially viable. The dynamics of accumulated discounted cash flow is positive. You can see it on chart. Uh, yes, as Katya mentioned before, we identified possible risks for our project and uh, put them uh, on the map uh, depending on the probability and their influence on our project. Uh, so we identified key risks and their lack of infrastructure, which we took into consideration and added some extra investment into infrastructure in our financial plan. Uh, limited growth rate of demand is a reason to introduce our equipment services for car owners, which can stimulate uh, car owners to change uh, their fuel. And of course, there is no doubt that uh, one of the main aspects of good project is social relevance. We identified key project, project stakeholders and evaluated their influence on them. We concluded that our project is favorable for our customers and also has positive influence on ecology. Moreover, it helps government to save budget on health services and improve the investment portfolio of our shareholders. Well, and to ramp up, we, we would point out the key success factors of our project. First, it meets the challenges and opportunities of industry and uh, environment. Second, it is directed on the development of uh, Central Russia. Third, it has uh, the uh, uh, short payback period and prominent financial results. And uh, finally, it mitigates the risks and has solid social responsibility. Um, by the way, uh, during the past two days, we heard many experts' opinion that proves that we made the right choice. So let's make the bright future for NP Company and thank you. Thank you very much, Team Neft.
Thank you for your nice presentation, for your interesting presentation, for all the insights you have given us. And now I kindly ask the Judiciary Committee to start with questions. Thank you. I think it is very nice and real project to look at. But how do you estimate your competitive advantage? That's the first question. And the second one is the potential demand for your project construction stations. Uh, I can say that uh, our competitive advantage is based, as we said, on our core competence and uh, this includes that we already have uh, some uh, stations and as Diana said, uh, we are going to reconstruct some of them, so we, have, uh, we already have uh, some foundation of infrastructure for our project. Uh, moreover, we have a uh, unified brand, so we can sell our new project under this unified brand, which is well known among uh, consumers. It also increases our chances to uh, enter the market successfully. And uh, speaking about uh, limited growth, uh, it is uh, really a risk, but um, uh, as I said, we introduced uh, re-equipment services, where we, uh, which we think will be a stimulus and um, some kind of incentive for uh, future consumers to uh, change um, their cars in these centers. Uh, and uh, we think, and we based our um, um, our calculation on the idea of some experts' opinions that in few years, maybe in five years, uh, there will be a demand rate which will boost uh, the market and after that uh, um, demand growth will be much higher. Uh, speaking about demand, I'd like to add that we used some statistics about increase of CNG and giant cars. Then we uh, estimated that uh, one CNG station can serve 357 uh, CNG and giant cars. Then we divided this number and got potential number of CNG stations. Uh, and according uh, to the number, or to the, um, our budget uh, limitations, we got the number of stations and um, the main demand uh, basis was uh, founded on this calculation. And what uh, level of gas price did you use for your assumption? Uh, 12 rubles for cubic meters. Oh, can I can I add something? From technological point of view, as you see a map of gas pipelines and map federal highways, so we tried to identify the most populated zone for the I mean in terms of cars. So it's tracks, it's and the gas distributed station allow us to so we have enough infrastructure, we have uh, GPP gas processing plant, we have pipelines, we have gas. Okay. Uh, dear students, uh, we, uh, we have presented very interesting analysis of external factors, really. Uh, and uh, my, uh, my question is connected with the criteria of uh, analysis uh, analytic tool. Uh, please explain your choice of this criteria list. Influence, time, and level of certainty. Yeah. So uh, we um, perceive this um, analysis as the integration, like a three D model. So we have in one axis we have this influence. This was estimated by the experts' opinion from one point, uh, basic mm -hmm. point to ten. Then we we used uh, the time period, short term, mid term, and long term. Yes. So. How, how long this trend is supposed to influence uh, our industry. And finally, we, we used this level of certainty that shows how certain this trend is. So uh, the, mo uh, the level of certainty shows uh, there are uh, four levels of certainty. It is uh, one direction, certain uh, moment. Uh, when we have uh, a few direction, it's, uh, uh, it was uh, rated by two points. And when we have uh, a constraint range of directions, it's less certain situation. And finally, we have uh, uh, unconstrained range of direction, and this is basically the uncertain situation. So uh, by this analysis, we can more or less uh, uh, in, uh, estimate some key factors and trends that will influence our industry the most. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I have a couple of questions. Um, how many customers do you envisage by 2020 in, in uh, amount of cars? 
uh, as customers, we can see, uh, thank you for your question, as customers, we considered uh, the number of CNG, uh, CNG cars. So till this period, we counted uh, 208,000 uh, uh, cars. So you said the existing cars or... No, no, it's uh, statistics uh, and uh, some forecasts. Okay, but it's very difficult to develop a business on statistics and forecasts for the future made by other parties. What is your own assumption? How does the market develop? How will you convince the customer to use a CNG car? In our financial cal calculations, we decided to also to use some kind of uh, safe uh, case, and that's why we added that each station uh, will uh, use for amount of uh, half possible uh, amounts of uh, filling per day. I mean, uh, each station which we introduce into our infrastructure can fill uh, 500 uh, cars uh, in average, uh, and. Um, uh, we used uh, uh, the assumption that only 300 uh, will be uh, filled, 300 cars will be filled per day in a short term and uh, mm, short term situation. So that's why we uh, we didn't just based on some consumption that uh, the rate will grow uh, from 1 to 100 percent in a few years, but we tried to uh, use some kind of uh, real assumptions. And how many billion cubic meters? Do you want to sell annually, finally, through the stations? Have you made such a calculation? Annual million cubic meters, you mean in normal condition? Or well, it's, it's, it's a segment of the gas business, so to say, and okay. usually it's measured in sales in BCM per year. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see. I just mean that it can be in normal condition. It's one volume in compressed condition for 200 uh, bars. It's another volume. That's true, but standard con condition. Uh, for standard condition, it's approximately uh, one and a half BCM. Okay. Per, per year, and it will increase. We are supposed to have some increase because we, as, a, as it was mentioned, we have assumptions that we have increase of consumption. So it's not drastically, but... It is. One last question. Uh, you showed the map of the highways and then uh, the stations you're planning. But since it's CNG and it's cars uh, and it's not long haul heavy duty vehicles, wouldn't it be better to have the stations uh, in, the, in the populated areas where the people use CNG cars to go to work, to go shopping, etc.? Yes, it's a very good question. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what again, Aswa, we have two main directions for development. First, we have limited investments, and we can't uh, construct our stations in both uh, big cities and along the uh, highways, federal highways. We choose uh, federal highways because we have pipe. We, we are a big country. We have pipes, gas pipelines, and whether we can... Uh, construct our station uh, inside big uh, cities, we should to construct our, our station first between these big cities in order to do a possibility to travel, to go to another city and so on. Of course, we check the possibility of this construction. We check the, as we check, uh, the minimum distance between uh, two gas stations is approximately 200, uh, 250 kilometers. And in order to construct gas station, we need gas uh, redistribution station from the pipelines in order to decrease pressure. So, and we are supposed to construct our own pipelines until our gas stations. So it's possible. Russia allows to do it. We check on this forum as well. And so, which we, we choose? It's, it sounds like this. Just because we need to construct stations between cities. As well, we are thinking to do a pilot project for the public transport, such as bus, bus parks. We are also supposed to do it for taxa parks. By today morning, we go to the, this expo forum by taxi, and we have small conversation with uh, taxi driver. Is it possible? Is it easy for them to use uh, gas? But he told us it's not so easy because, you know, it's it's more or less uh, very. Uh, personal question because it's a lot of uh, low and so on and so on uh, and as we have as I told 
uh, before limited investment, we choose this variant, this, this option of our development. I hope I answer your question. <laughs> Uh, dear colleagues, uh, I'm responsible for R&D management, so uh, my question is about R&D as a part of your project. If you look at uh, slide 12, so uh, you, you have chosen NP, NP Venture Fund as a, um, as a tool to finance R&D. Uh, please tell us why and what does it mean uh, the time period till 2030? Uh, thank you for a very interesting question. Uh, although we focus uh, on developing one project, we should look forward and develop uh, other variants of our prospective business. First of all, we should uh, provide uh, the maximum security of our business. So during uh, practically the whole period uh, of our project development, we invest in uh, security of this technology and also we, uh, we are going to invest in other potential uh, sources of business. And of course we are going to use the model of open innovation so we'll be, uh, we will be looking for innovative startups, entrepreneurs to use uh, their technologies to col collaborate, to <laughs> invest in universities, uh, make some programs to cooperate with uh, big companies, what is, what is very important uh, in nowadays. Uh, this is a very risky business, you know. Uh, yes, it is, but uh, <laughs> we are looking forward. We have to. Yeah, may I add something? Uh, also, there is an advantage in investing in new ventures like that because we can build some core uh, managerial competencies in these new directions of diversification because nowadays uh, the Russian market isn't ready for that, but maybe in future, uh, after some time, uh, the competence should be already in, in the game so, so we don't have competitive disadvantage in this place. So. Uh, this is our search with, with this fund. Thank you. And also maybe I can add something because as it, it, as it was mentioned before, Russia is really big and Central Russia market is only part of some possible action what we can implement. Uh, I told about uh, West Siberia, East Siberia fields. It's a lot of its great potential. It's very big resource, very big resources uh, and some Part of our program, such as Helium, it's very prospective direction. It's very prospective. And I hope I answer my question. Thank you very much. No. Tiedj remembers one more question for this team. <laughs> okay. The last one. The last one on slide 14. Slide 14, you were mentioning that you were in contact with your consumers. I would be really uh, eager to know how. You have been driving taxis all over Russia to ask the taxi drivers how they feel, but how you did, by f phone calls or by internet uh, investigation? So c could you repeat, repeat the question? Yeah, you can hear me? St slightly? Uh, slightly, yep. Okay, I have a question on slide number 14, one four. Yep. You were saying something about that you have been in contact with the consumers, yep. the market, mm -hmm. the, your clients, your future markets. How did you do that? By uh, internet, asking, asking taxi drivers, getting along? What was your message? How, how did you do it? Yeah, actually, uh, yeah, uh, basically this slide is dedicated to the uh, stakeholders' impact. Yeah, and uh, we can see that uh, our customers, the drivers, uh, will have these advantages uh, that shown on the slide. slide. And also, uh, we, we can provide some service, uh, service to stimulate uh, the demand. And uh, this basically will be our strategy to provide more advantage for drivers. Yep, and uh, except uh, asking taxi drivers and, and, and so on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Team Neft. And I ask you kindly, as, as you had a little bit better opportunity to hear the jury, please leave your um, transmitters on those tables for the, for the next team. Thank you for your input. Thank you for your creative answers. Please take your seats.
And now I invite our Team Orange to take the stage and to take the challenge. I'll give you a minute to put on those nice devices. They really help. <clears throat> yes, thank you. Okay. If you are ready, please start. Dear members of the board, uh, we are here on a follow-up meeting after our last meeting. In our last meeting, we decided to sell off all our oil assets. And in the time that passed, we did an extensive analysis and we came up with a new plan. Like, could you briefly introduce the new plan? Yes, Bedent, of course I will. Um, well, could you go to the next slide, please? Ooh, I don't got to we oh, think it would be a very unlogical moment to sell off our oil assets. Since the oil price is very low, the value of the assets is also very low, so we won't, wouldn't get much money out of that. That's why we propose a new plan. Uh, right now, in Mongolia, there's a big mining boom going on. In the south of Mongolia, huge companies like Rio Tinto are developing a mine which will deliver minerals and rare metals for the coming f uh, 50 years. Um, we think this will bring much possibilities for a, c a company like NP. Next slide. That's why we want to build a crude oil pipeline from our existing network towards the south of Mongolia. There, we want to build a refinery and sell refined oil products locally to the uh, mining industry. Yes, thank you, Lai. This sounds like, a, sounds like a solid plan to me. But Adam, how does it fit in into our long-term strategy? When, draft when drafting the, the proposal, we fully took into consideration long-term trends and developments in global energy industry. Among other things, we, we took into consideration the persistence of crude oil in the, in the world's future energy mix. As we know, by 2035, the share of oil in global primary energy consumption will amount to roughly 25%. Secondly, we took into consideration the continued growth in global energy consumption. Between 2013 and 2035, global energy consumption is expected to grow by roughly 40%. The largest potential for growth in global demand for energy lies in Asia, which will account for approximately 90% of the total growth. Europe is a mature and stable market. Therefore, we do intend to remain active in Europe. However, the, the potential for growth of our companies predominantly in Asia, most notably in Mongolia. Professor Tatyana Mitrova from Institute of Energy Research of the Russian Academy of Sciences reassured me yesterday in our conversation that this is a very promising project. So, Brent, uh, Berend, if you don't play, you don't win. Let's do this. Yes, well, thank you, Adam. This looks like a very solid analysis from a demand perspective. But within this bad investment climate we're in right now, where do we get the supply from? Don't worry, Berend. Don't worry. We <laughs> get this covered. My team of engineers and I have developed a strategic plan for, the, uh, for ensuring oil supply throughout both the short term and the long term. In the short term, we want to maximize oil production from the existing oil wells in Russia by using uh, enhanced oil recovery methods. Uh, we, in fact, want to, to uh, up to increase our oil recovery factor and bring it up to international standards. To achieve this, we will partner up with universities, use our brilliant students, and use the very solid knowledge base that we have here domestically, because using domestic resources is a key factor. We want to create a synergetic cooperation between education and industry. On the long term, on the other hand, we want to uh, build new wells across all of Russia, such that all supply will be granted also in the long term. We believe that this strategy will, be, uh, will ensure all, that the oil demand is going to be satisfied at all times. Well, thank you, Adam and uh, Eduardo, for this analysis, analysis about uh, the demand and the supply side. But the business case, how does it look? 
What is the, our financial perspective? Yes. Uh, well, Berend, uh, Board of Directors, I can be very short about this. There seems to be a very bright prospect for this project. Uh, our main financial indicator of interest is the um, crack spread, which seems to be validate our decision to go into this market and in this project. Um, this, so there's an implied uh, potential profitability of the project. We still need to make, because this is a, a new change of plan, we still need to do a lot of analysis, for example, on transportation costs, OPEX costs, but we, we see this as a first step in the final investment decision. Thank you. Uh, right now we heard only great things. Are there some risks? What are the main risks we see in this project? Uh, yes, of course, uh, there is no project without risk. So can you go to the next slide? <laughs> well, we uh, identified three main risks for this project. Uh, first, the security of demand. Can we be uh, sure that our products will sell in the upcoming years? Uh, yeah, so that is one of the main risks. What if the, because we want to shift our uh, sell to Asia, what if the Asian economy drops? Then the next, next risk is the political uncertainty. Uh, what will happen if Mongolia boycotts Ro Russia? Or what will happen if uh, negotiations are tough? Uh, um, what if the Asian uh, try to replicate our technologies? And last, we also have financial risk. Uh, what happens if the oil prices uh, keep on fluctuating? What are we going to do with that? Well, indeed, that's, that seems like very, very risk we should, we should try to manage. What we try to do for this risk, first of all, for the um, demand risk, the main product which comes from this mine in Mongolia, it's like raw mine minerals. Uh, it's, it's like very high quality minerals. They've been used in like all computer kind of products. So lately there's a lot of talk about uh, Asian growth which is dropping. But we think this is the worldwide demand for this kind of minerals, it's, it, it's bound to grow. So we think it's a safe bet. Uh, for the political uncertainty, um, we, we see this project as, as like a first project in a growing relationship between Russia and the Asian market. This could be a, a sort of front runner project to show how Russia, Mongolia, Asia, the whole region, how they could work together. So we see that actually this political uncertainty is an opportunity for our business plan. Um, considering the financial challenge, we have a product hedge because now at the current moment the oil price for crude oil is very low. So it's very attractive to sell refined products. Let's say for example that the crude oil price will increase in the future then we can still use our crude oil pipeline to sell the crude oil directly to the Asian markets. So we, we win both. If the crude price goes up, we win. And if the crude price goes down, we win as well. Thank you, Tuan. Well, to conclude this presentation, I would like to summarize our plan. Uh, our plan is not to sell the oil assets. We should keep the oil assets, and we should actually expand the oil assets. Well, how are we going to do that? We're going to build a new pipeline to the east of Mongolia, to the south of Mongolia. Mm -hmm. We're going to build a new refinery there, and we're going to enhance our oil, oil production supply within, uh, <laughs> within Russia. We believe the wind is blowing from through the east. Uh, we hope to get you on board of our ship. <laughs> and to conclude all of this, I want to thank my team for the past month of hard work. I want to thank the board of directors for their attention, and I want to thank the audience for their attention as well. Spasiba to Fine Manja. Thank you very much, Team Orange. Um, as for me, we just attended a real board meeting. I don't know how do you feel. For me, it looks like a real board meeting. Thank you very much for this <laughs> nice feeling. Our senior experts in our Judiciary Committee who already have a lot of experience in attending board meetings and taking part in, of them, in them. Uh, they can compare your performance to the real life, I think, and they surely have a lot of questions. However, we are so limited on time that I would ask, I would ask you, dear members of the Judiciary Committee, uh, maybe to try to do it in about 10 minutes, is it possible? I'll try. Thank you very much. Thank you for such an original approach to Mongolia. It's, it's nice, interesting. Uh, so as far as I understand, you have your own assets in Irkutsk region. It's your own fields, oil fields. You have your own oil fields in Irkutsk region, or not? Uh, no, in, 
Yes, yes, we do. In Russia, it's we yours. Do. Yes, yes. Yeah. And how is, what is the length of the pipeline you're going to build? Uh, we're going to build a pipeline which is roughly 1,000 kilometers. 1,000 uh, kilometers? Yes. It, it, much more than 250 million you put. It's very expensive. Then how did you estimate the Mongolian market for your refinery products if Rio Tinto is not happy of having you there? I think Tuan, can you? <laughs> the question was, how did you estimate the potential demand in Mongolia for refinery products if your potential partner, Rio Tinto, is not happy with dealing with your project? Yes, well, what we see on the Mongolian market, uh, I hope I understand the, cor uh, the question correctly, uh, it's, it's like prospected to be the country with the highest e economic growth in the coming decade. So there's, there's going to be demand for refined products to it's use. It's a it. very small country with a very limited population. What is the potential for building their refinery? Uh, for, for the oil for, products? For the refinery, yes. Okay, I, I don't know, I have to accept, accept numbers for that. Um, I think we also start in Mongolia because we think it's the gate to whole of Asia. So we see a lot of potential. So what is then the portfolio of NP if this project is realized? Is that the only project in the portfolio? Uh, so basically, our long-term strategy is to go from just the mo mostly the mature markets in Europe to supply more the Asian market. And this proposal we have now in, in terms of oil, it's like a first project within that strategy. But we, we actually want to focus on both coal or uh, gas and oil, mainly to the Asian market. So the, this oil project is like the first project, but we also want to increase our gas sales to, to this region. Okay, but in relation to the whole portfolio, this investment is, is how much? 10%, 50, 20? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have that excess numbers as well. Well, I'm getting at this is a high-risk project. It's a dedicated pipeline into a rather small country. Yeah. Uh, and if something goes wrong, you might have a big problem. Okay, I don't, I don't have the exact numbers, but it's, like, it's, it's not a, a huge project. It's like a small initial project to, to go to this market. To, uh, to explore the opportunities there, and then if it's a good market, we, we have more potential for the future to increase the investments. Yeah, basically, we want to satisfy the demand for this uh, uh, mining situation that there is in Mongolia, taste the waters, uh, not spend too much in this market as of yet. As I said, let's taste the waters, and then from there, in a few years, we will decide further uh, what approach to take uh, with this market, but uh, we consider it the, the gateway to Asia in general. One question coming back to the project itself. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, there's a train uh, that the Trans Mongolian that uh, goes from Baikal more or less to Ulaanbaatar. Uh, can't you simply uh, transport your crude via via train instead of building a pipeline? I think there was a, a quite an extensive infrastructure of pipeline already in place. The 1,000 kilometers we are planning to build is actually a rather, relatively small part for the distance we are going to cover. So we're using already the existing infrastructure, which is already there. This is why we choose uh, to build it by pipeline. Did I answer the question? OK. <laughs> Thank you very much, Team Orange. We all wish you all the success in tasting the waters in Mongolia. <laughs> and we thank you a lot for your nice presentation. Please go now back to your seats. Leave all those nice devices in place. Yes, thank you. And there is something that's called fair play. Since our esteemed Judiciary Committee has been given a possibility, an opportunity to ask many questions, and the questions have been really challenging, thank you for this, first of all, and uh, keep going. 
<laughs> in that challenging way. But um, I would allow myself to ask you also some questions, maybe just one for the beginning and we'll see. <laughs> How does it feel to, to be questioned, <laughs> to get questions? I know all of you are very busy persons, and you came here to the International Guest Forum with a lot of goals and a lot of appointments and a lot of meetings, and the schedule here is really tight, and your personal schedule, I guess, is much more tight even than the schedule of the whole event. But you made it possible to be here, to join the jury, to give us your in input. So um, I'm just wondering, what was your personal motivation for taking all this effort for this event? Who of you would like to answer? Well, first of all, I'll, because I'm dean of Gupkin University, I love dealing with the youngsters and students, and I think it is very challenging for them it's a very good approach for them to try themselves as a team to build a strategy. But it happened that I'm participating in the Mineral Forum in the Gordney, St. Petersburg Mineral University. So when I was invited to chair the jury, I was very happy to do it. And I, I still enjoy for the time being. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Tilegna. More or less, uh, we expect from our jury members from the academia side to put attention on the achievements of students. This is why we love our academia. <laughs> However, there are also members of the business, um, representatives of the business as jury members here. Would you be so kind, one of you at least? Of course, no, 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 Thank no, you very no problem. Much. It's indeed it's a, it's a hectic travel scheme so every week somewhere else. After this is Portugal and there will be Colombia and then Washington. So that's the end of this month. Nevertheless, um, all these students which we have around, I have to my own in the Company 7, working a lot with Tatiana Mitrova in Moscow, and also in Washington with students, uh, they ask most of the time very silly questions, which is true. And then we have to answer them, and we, we most of the time panicking because we don't know the real answer, because we really have to think over what was our aim, why we were doing it, how much it was spending, all the questions we are also forwarding here. So thanks to keep us alive and keep us bringing clear from misery, we have to thank the students. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Green. Thank you. Since um, you as a representative of the business side uh, brought us to this idea, uh, I would like to ask another question, last one. <laughs> the idea of the forum is, amongst others, to demonstrate the intellectual potential of the sector. And those guys here, those 30 young men and women, are definitely a part of this intellectual potential, I think a very important part, because they are our future and the future of the sector. And um, when I look in the audience, I see more or less um, a huge number of other fellow students um, and a number of company representatives. If you look into the audience, would you have expected a higher number of um, attendees from the business side, uh, maybe HR specialists, uh, looking for high potentials, looking especially for those who might be the future of their companies? Or is it um, the ratio you have expected already? Should we maybe next year do something more to um, attract the business to use this event as a kind of um, pre-evaluation, pre-selection? Uh, Mr. Nizetsky, thank you. Okay, as already said, I, uh, I am responsible for R&D management and innovation. So uh, as for me, I use any possibility to find the bright minds. Uh, we have a lot of institutes, uh, of Gazprom institutes, and uh, we are attract young uh, and uh, solid and consistent uh, guys who, who knows what they want and who uh, likes to provide scientific and technical research. So uh, I, 
um, maybe this kind of event and this kind of event for me is um, is a good chance to find maybe one guy from all of this just to 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 give an offer to work for uh, any of uh, research Thank institutes. you very much, Mr. Mm -hmm. And maybe this is a kind of motivation for you guys sitting there in the audience next year, maybe a bit later, another event like this. Participate as a team, as a team member. Bring your input. You see people sitting here in the jury. They maybe are, will open you the door to your personal future, to your bright future in the energy sector. Thank you very much. And now, I think, after this short break, it's time to invite our fourth team to take the stage this is the team with a very nice name, The Family. Well, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Thank you very much for your participation tonight. Uh, let the team family introduce our task solution to the case study at the crossroads. Dear colleagues, we are going back to the future, and now our main task is to make our company even more profitable and successful, familiar with past, responsible for future. We made energy map with eight current trends and compare them with the Russian ones. We came to a conclusion that Russia is actively in only half of them. That means that the ways of development are completely different. Deeply understanding the position of Russia in world trends, we must choose a special way of unique Russian development based on high resource potential. So, which resources are of the highest demand in the future? In order to find the answer, we decided to look back and then to focus the future trends applying two criteria, socio-economic criteria and resource ones. What we want to stress out here is that by 2035, uh, oil and gas will save their position as the most popular resources. There is also an obvious growth of the pit industry, which was suddenly abandoned a few years ago, but now has real chances to become one of the leaders on the market, especially in Russia, where results of pit are enormous. There is a necessity to analyze the external factors that the Russian companies focus on. We chose the pastel analysis as reflecting all the aspects. We believe that the attention is distributed fairly in approximate regular intervals, as you see on the graph. But we feel high pressure of political and economical factors on the industry with substantial role of implemented low background and technological competition as well. So what we recommend is to decrease the dependence on import through forming alliances with relative high ability of latest technolog technologies implementation and in the long run it helps to observe price reduction. According to the terms, the terms of the case, our target territory is Central Russia. As we all know, Central Russia is uh, very uh, rich for qualified labor force and research centers, but along with that fact, uh, Central Russia has large reserves of peat. Uh, it's enough to look at Tver, which is in the very north. Uh, it produces 2,082 million tons. Um, moreover, Central Russia has refinery plants that uh, leave residual dual products as bitumen. So we have reviewed two ways to make the best uh, use of uh, Central Russia's resource potential. It's to develop beet industry and to develop bitumen industry. NP is a company with short but very productive history. Rapid increase and high development rates made their best. NP became one of the most stable energy companies. Despite all the barriers and difficulties, the company survived. But now, it needs a quick modernization due to, according to current financial instability. Taking into consideration company's history, we chose among cost leadership, differentiation, and innovative strategy the mixture of last two, according to Porter. How exactly should new NP strategy look like? That is the question we are going to answer. Because nowadays the world is changing. In the decision-making process, we use the system of several microphone, external microphone, factors. Please. It is highly important. It is highly important not just to take into account each criterion separately, but also analyze them as a big connected picture. 
To see the effect of factors and result of analysis, we have created a three-criterion, three-dimension model, 3C cube. Dear colleagues, please have a look on the slide. Uh, three main factors which influenced the industry were taken and put on three axes of the cube, with values from one to five. Well, the values of each parameter varies between worst and best possible. This allows us to state that all the situations in the market are inside the cube. And for better view, we've painted it with gradient from red color with the middle point of negative scenario area to red for positive one. The 3C world situation changed through the history as well, which is proved by the retrospective points from years 1995 to 2015. The cube presents 125 different political and world situations. All of them are real. All of them are possible. After that, we analyzed four possible ways of investment that have been chosen early. This picture is the result of comparison between them. For each of the alternatives, we gave the estimates from 0 to 100 percent and came to the conclusion that three of four plans have a high chance to be implemented. Looking deeper into each plan, it is important to choose the right combination of different plan solutions. The bitumen modified plant works as a reactor, heater and mixer of usual bitumen and polymer materials. Modified bitumen is more thermal and low temperature stable. The biofuel plant works as a big collector of raw materials such as grass, forest and peat. The peat power plant uses peat pellets as a power plant fuel. Pellets are ecologically friendly and provide a high heating value. Well, uh, taking into consideration all the facts that have been discussed above, we formed three potential perspectives. In conservative scenario, bitumen production is a basis for NP company due to a stable situation, which provides a secure background for further development in highly volatile and unpredictable energy market today. Ildar? Thanks. If the company is ready to take risks, we advise to invest in a pit industry. But the success is possible only with a comprehensive approach and in cooperation with the government because the branch has both high potential and necessity in a full recovery. The mixed scenario proposes the most balanced outline, taking into account the opportunities of cooperation between two chosen strategies. The evaluation map of risks, which you can see on the slide, help us to analyze each strategy properly. We've divided risks into nine big groups. Then, for each plant, we made its own analysis according to three levels of risk. From map, it gets obvious that the bitumen plant is connected with uh, the lowest uh, risk rates. The key place in all three scenarios is given to the bitumen plant, and the part is going to be changed in the innovative one. Based on key indicators of investment analysis, the mixed scenario seems to be the most optimal because of the balance between economic efficiency and risks. There is a necessity in dividing our project management into different stages <clears throat> for deeper understanding how to manage our investment flows. So, According to our plan, the realization project will last till the year 2022. The most important project st stages like development and production, distribution and marketing will take lots of time, mostly the whole realization period. Summing up, we would like to say that, in our opinion, the mixture of conservative and aggressive scenario with two plant assets, the bitumen and the biodiesel plant, is the most perspective way of development and P in current situation. Orientation not only for local but also for European and Asian market will give our company the greatest chance to become even more competitive on Russian and, of course, international market. Particular mission is to increase pit industry and to involve innovative technologies in Russian energy world to make sure that Russia is in the threshold of the greatest future. Dear colleagues, thank you for your attention. Thank you, team family. And now I ask our dear jury members to start with questions. Thank you. Could you please uh, tell where are you going to develop your business? You are going to build a chemical plant outside Moscow, in the Moscow region. 
And we're going to take okay, the raw material for the plant. Okay, I can answer this question. Thank you for your question. There are a lot of raw materials in uh, central Russia. For example, Tver region, there are uh, 2 billion uh, tons of peat. And, uh, of course, near these, uh, these raw materials, we will beat, build plants and our industry. You will get a license to develop oh, how... how uh, um, uh, there is a process I can show you. Uh, first of all, we should uh, harvest it and transport to the plant, and it must be near uh, the, our sources. Then we but you need to own land, or oh, what is yes, the procedure uh, for this? Yes, we, we will buy our own you land, will buy. of course, oh, okay. and uh, we include it in our economical uh, researches. And how did you get to this NPV scenarios? What kind of assumption did you put for uh, the aggressive and we, mixed? It was based on our investments, $2 billion. So, uh, uh, for example, the most expensive industry is bitumen industry. Uh, Masha, could you exp explain, please? Yes, uh, of course. Thank you for this question. I can explain. Uh, each of the scenarios based on the uh, average market prices, and for each of them, um, we focus on the market situation. And um, each of the scenarios... Uh, is uh, focused on the amount of the investments. Uh, also, the um, differences between investments are uh, explained by uh, the capacities of the plants. So the uh, quantity of the plants explained by their capacity and also the amount of investments. I can see the management of project stages here, but it's not obvious how did you get the figures for the financial analysis, but anyway. My question, my question is, is around the um, environment. Uh, supposing you have been selling buying the ground, you have a license from the local government or the central government, whatever. Where is the impact of emissions? Because peat is not such a nice material. It will have a lot of emission, and the emission constraint also looking to the COP21 in Paris next month will have restraints on your production license and on your limitation. I don't find anything back on the risk of emission. Well, thank you very much for your question. Uh, on this question, I have to comment that uh, the situation changed in the l last decade, and uh, uh, we feel that in mass media, in the society, the imagine, imagination of uh, peat industry is a little bit uh, not up to date, let's say. Uh, first of all, peat industry is, uh, uh, comes in our plan against coal industry, which has much more uh, worse... Uh, Emissions. Mm, Emissions. Num numbers and par uh, parameters in the uh, field of uh, ec ecology and uh, eco ecological efficiency. Then uh, the latest technologies uh, which were brought in the market in the last several years will help us to uh, show one of the lowest uh, aggressive factors against uh, environment today. Can I add something? I agree with Leonid and uh, please uh, look at the management of our project stages. There is such stage as research and development, and it lasts during all our realization. So, uh, new technologies, new innovations, and I uh, serve the internet. There are now a lot of pit projects, for example, in Africa, and new technologies uh, help to law them to reduce the emissions. So, I think uh, if we would invest in it, so we would have a good effect, good result. After uh, reading the literature on the material, we feel the potential of uh, this industry uh, also in the field of uh, efficiency uh, with the environment. I absolutely agree with my teammates, and I also would like to say that peat industry is as a blue ocean. It's not so competitive, and we are absolutely sure that ha we have a lot of chance to become successful in this industry and to increase this it's in the world level. Thank if, you. If, you, if you suppose that all the CO2 you are producing or emitting has to be storaged and captured, is that 
if that is the, is the case, is then the project still feasible? If? Could you please repeat the question a bit the louder? The question is, if the CO2 produced by the plant has to be captured and stored, giving new environmental rules, no. if this cost will be on, put on the table in the project, is the project because still feasible? We have another scenario where is, there is no pit at all. It's a consortium scenario. So we would choose this one because we have a uh, bitumen industry in all the scenarios. So if uh, we want to uh, follow the rules, so we would choose the consortium strategy and focus only on bitumen industry. And our global uh, mission will be as a global leader of bitumen production. So I think I I will this question. If I might add uh, my answer to this question, yes, uh, these costs are included uh, as a logistics, uh, but uh, generally speaking, these two fields uh, are very prospective and uh, have a very high potential in our opinion, because if we speak about gas and oil, there are uh, big market players like Gazprom, and we have only $2 billion to invest, and we have to show a high uh, return on investment by year 2022. That's it. So we should be realistic. Uh, we try to be realistic. That's why we put uh, much attention in our presentation to investigation and finding a right strategy, and that's it. Could you and just the, and the, uh, I'm sorry, and the correlation between two industries like bitumen industry and peat industry is uh, uh, limits to zero. That's why we estimate uh, our risk, risks, uh, market risk as po at possible low level. Can you Thank just you. show the last slide again, please? Okay. Here yeah, I'm still still struggling what exactly your proposal is because your recommendation is very very broad. You say de uh, development of biofuel market, merger of bitumen and peat recycling. Mm -hmm. uh, earlier, you, you showed a chart of uh, power production out of peat. What exactly is the proposal? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I will uh, continue. If uh, to answer the question, I will ask Ildar to give us the slide with three strategies. So uh, this one will help, uh, help us, and here we have three scenarios, as we said, and uh, th uh, this is the mixture of, so we have two possible branches, bitumen industry and uh, peat industry. Peat industry we find uh, as a venture, uh, more like a venture business with very high uh, return on investments, but uh, very high risks, and uh, to decide on which risk the board of director is uh, ready today, let's say, if we uh, present our project. So we need to combine it uh, right, right here. So for conservative one, we take one percentage of bitumen industry. But, and for bitumen industry, as you understand, this is the material which is needed and is popular all over the world. We are oriented in Asia markets, in Russian local market, we can, are orient, uh, orientated at European market, market as well because we work in Central Russia. Um, so, uh, as I answered, so we should find the right combination of these both options depending on the risk the board of directors is ready to accept. And I'd like to add that in our industry, it's always very important to rely not just on one field of development. It's very important to to choose some different strategies and different to construct different plans to get different effect. That's why we've created a great like three C cube where we found different ways of development of our country. They present also political background, resource factors, and uh, resource prices, and technological factor. And that's why we want to show you that we see all different ways of development because we don't know which political situation will be like in two or oh, three five year. So it's very different. That's why. We want to create different ways of development. That's why we've chosen different plans and different strategies. So and, uh, sorry, can you uh, show the slides, Ildar, please, with the potential growth of uh, PITS? Uh, just uh, some retrospective facts. Uh, many years ago, uh, peat industry was really popular in Russia. So there were many factories and plants uh, in the central Russia in general that produced plants. And it was just, you know, uh, a lot of um, uh, investments put in this industry. And you see that then, in, uh, some years ago, the industry fell down because uh, people realize that gas and oils are easier and so on, but we uh, can 
show you the forecast that uh, in some years the PD industry and its po population uh, will grow faster and faster. That's why we think that uh, we have to do our best to develop it as soon as possible. And of course, it's diversification of uh, investments. And of course, we're young and it's always nice to develop innovative technologies. And that is our greatest aim. Thank you. And we should never forget that some uh, times things happen by accident in our lives and if we see such big amount of cons uh, consuming peat uh, in the Soviet Union uh, because of first and numerous amounts of it, uh, and I want to underline that this uh, mineral is renewable by the way, so we feel the potential of it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, team family. You are the pioneers in our new future peat industry. Mm -hmm. So we wish you success. And uh, now I kindly ask you to go back to your seats. Uh, just please, uh, we spoke a lot about peat, but don't forget that we have bitumen industry as a secure basis for our company. <laughs> so now we just have only one presentation more to hear. Oh, it's a pity. I invite our last team. It's a German team, which, we, uh, which has chosen the original name of the company, NP 2.0. So guys, good luck. The stage is yours. Thank you. Dear ladies and gentlemen, once again, but for the last time, welcome to our presentation. My name is Isabel Luther. I'm the leader of Team two, uh, NP 2.0. We are from TU Berg Academy Freiberg. I will present you our thoughts on NP case study. I will begin with an analysis of NP's business units. The figure shows the different units subordinated to the life cycle stages. This provides the basis for our further strategies. The um, gas ENP is placed in the growth stage because of its high potential. In this sector, the demand is increasing because there is an overall trend of um, a stronger energy awareness by customers. In relation to gas ENP, the other business units are um, of a lower growth rate. So petroleum refining, petrochemistry, oil and gas transportation, as well as gas ENP are placed in the major stage. At least the mining division is placed in the aging stage. Coal as an energy source is not welcome anymore because of its tremendous environmental effects. So on this basis, the business units are summarized in this charts as a current portfolio of NP. In order to improve NP's long-term strategy, we want to realign this portfolio. So as a first step, we eliminate the mining division because as I said, mining is not welcome anymore. It does not fit the trend of cleaner energies, but we want to improve um, NP's company image and corporate social responsibility. So we re replace the mining division by renewable energy. Additionally, we add electricity distribution as a further pillar. Thus, in the future, NP is, not, is independent from the energy sources the power comes from. Besides this long-term strategy, we also concepted a short-term strategy. When developing our projects for this short-term strategy, we considered some important factors. 
First of all, the purpose is to shift the focus of NP from a concentrated oil and gas company to a more diversified energy future. By that, the focus is on uh, the territory of central Russia. And also, this project has to become profitable until the year 2022. Further, we um, did not to decide all of NP's oil assets. We um, want to keep oil as a pillar because uh, we need the short-term revenues and we also need the, the oil for the production of petrochemicals. So we decided just to sell 75% um, of NP's oil assets to get an investi investment basis of 1.5 billion euro for the realignment of NP. Further, there are some major trends and challenges which the projects address. We give NP the ability to uh, meet its international responsibility of ecological and climate challenges. Beside the projects are aiming at meeting the rising energy demand as well as the increased need of energy efficiency. Further, the projects address the trend of shifting the power generation sector from gas and coal, uh, from oil and coal to gas and renewables. Against this background, our first proposal is Samara Shale Oil Development. Um, by the way, you can see in the right corner a diagram. It shows um, how we allocated the investment basis of 1.5 billion to the different projects. And the actual project is distinct from the two other projects. So here we invested 720 billion euro. We need the Samara Shale Oil uh, Project to generate immediate profits. We uh, don't want to um, completely divest from oil to generate also um, a feedstock for the production of chemical, petrochemicals. Further, the Samara Oil, uh, the Samara um, oil field is located in, the, in central Russia and there already exists an infrastructure. By, the, um, by that, there are all, also several refineries in this area. Thus, additionally, it is close to the customer. Although there are higher operational costs, uh, shale development requires small out, um, cap, upfront capital outlays, which makes it much more attractive. We prepared a second solution. It shows zero emission power plants. To bring renewable energies to the Russian market, we establish um, zero emission power plants. It's a concept to integrate renewable energies on production level. For Central Russia, we suggest uh, energy mix ratio of 50% for wind energy, 30% for photovoltaic energy, and 20% for biomass energy. This energy mix should um, lead to a stable and predictable production. The implementation is proceeded in two phases. The first phase includes the development of energy of renewable energy projects at three locations, any at 100 megawatt. It also includes the development of partnerships for photovoltaic supply. The second phase compasses the supply of the of these central consumers, especially in the rural area, with clean and affordable energy. 
Our third solution uh, addresses contracting business. This means the restoration of not insulated buildings. To have a basis for this project, we uh, NP has first to establish uh, in, an insolent um, division. With insolent division as a partner, it is possible to gain a, a solid customer base and to um, purchase insolution, insulation material on better terms. The high quantity of not insulated buildings offers the opportunities for both the insulation division and the contracting business. At the end, please let me say some words. We uh, did not know the whole market um, conditions. So it's not possible to find the only solution. Further marketing, uh, market analysis is needed to give well-founded, completely strategies. However, we think investments in um, shale oil, renewables, and petrochemistry would make sense to reach a greener and more diversified basis. So, dear audi audience, I hope uh, you enjoyed our ideas. And in the name of our team, I want to thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, the board of directors of NP. 2.0. Thank you for your presentation. Dear jury members, would you please ask questions to this yes. team? Maybe I start. Uh, it's very deeply embedded in the German DNA to have renewables uh, and to insulate houses like crazy. Um, but do you think this is the right approach for the Russian market? Because how is a zero emission power plant um, made up from renewables, going to compete against low-cost gas-fired power plants of Gazprom and others. Um, what will the regulatory environment be? In Germany, this works because of very, very high subsidies. Would it work in Russia? Thank you for the question. Um, I think that we Europeans, uh, we made uh, um, great work about this. We bring these uh, renewable energies to market. We make it, made it cheaper and cheaper by innovations, by industrial production. And we think that renewables are, in, in Russian decentral areas, um, they are on grid parity. You, you think or you calculate it? Um, with the first three projects until 2022, we don't think uh, that we make profits, but uh, we think we give clean energy and we have first revenues, of course, and we made a lo make a lot of experience to establish our business all, all over Russia with decentral zero emission power plants. Okay, if I would be shareholder of NP and you sold some oil assets to get into this new business, I would have some doubts if it takes so many years until profits are generated because I want to see my dividends. Therefore, we split the, the amount of money until, uh, to three projects. So we diversified our investment. A question on my side, uh, a rather re remarkable combination of renewables and shale oil. Um, if, if we look to the economics of, of, of shale, except in Europe because they don't like shale, so that's not an option, but if we look to the United States uh, versus the Russians, I think the Russian shale perspective is, is much more expensive than the United States. So, or you find somewhere a field which is extremely good, or the figures is not really, really 
healthy, I think. Could you something tell us about the cost perspective of shale oil in Russia versus proven shale production in the United States? Um, yeah, uh, thanks for the question. Um, the thing is that, as we said before, the Samara shale is actually already developed. It was a conventional oil field back in the days, so we have all the infrastructure and the refineries, the pipelines, and everything is basically in place. And uh, on the second hand, uh, we have low risk there because we already know the geology. We know we have a lot of offset wells, so from exploring it or developing it, there's really a low risk. And on the other hand, beside the fact we have to frack those reservoirs and put, we have to put some money in, it, it will uh, generate money quite in a, in a, sh in a short, short time frame. So this was the idea to uh, at least uh, calm the investors a little bit down. <laughs> yeah, so um, we know if it's a shallow reservoir, for example, so the, the drilling costs would really be really low, ex es uh, especially at the moment where the rig rates are so low. We, really could, uh, we are really in a good position, actually, because we have the money and we can invest it now and the oil price probably will rise again. And so... Uh, yeah, we are, I think, in better shape than the competitors. Concerning the competitors, um, they are looking for the, um, let's say, the really the big place in Russia. Like, they are conventional reservoirs where they can make a lot of money. And probably not a lot of people are interested in developing those shale plays. So this might be kind of a niche to uh, sneak, we, we can sneak into. So, did, did, did you already had one, two, three, five drillings? Any, any drilling? Excuse me, again, please. Did you already one or two drillings to more or less test it? Or still, still something has to be done in the first stage if it concerns shale drillings? Uh, well, there are already some, some wells drilled there uh, in the conventional reservoirs. So was this the question or? I, I really didn't get it. <laughs> no, if, if, if a country even like Holland wants to know something about shale, Anyway, we have to drill 400 wells to know something about an estimate. Oh yeah, this is this is uh, this is yeah exactly. This is the risk. Uh, we we don't know uh, the quality of the shale. This is the big issue, and uh, we know it when we produced it. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so yeah, that's yeah, it's right. We don't know exactly the quality of the shale and where it is, but uh, <laughs> you have some luck. You know, <laughs> have to uh, some. You have to have some confidence in your uh, project. So that's what we have. <laughs> No. Dear students, I mentioned your previous slide, the suitable infrastructure in Samara region for your shell uh, gas project. Please specify this fact. Sorry, could you maybe uh, repeat? Namely, the infrastructure yeah. in Samara region. Okay, there is actually conventional oil right now, as mm -hmm. we uh, read it. So you have uh, infrastructure from refineries, mm -hmm. and we try to use this again because it's the ours. So we don't actually sell our all oil assets, uh, mm -hmm. and we want to use our old infrastructure. Otherwise, you know, you have a lot of people working there, and that was also kind of an idea. And please uh, explain your um, new approach to presentation, only women toys. Is it gender revolution? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, how to explain it? We thought that you have, if you have 10 minutes, uh, it's really difficult to, to explain each project and we didn't want to miss some okay. time. So if you, we thought if you switch over to different ones, uh, different people, you miss some time. And we th wanted to be a little bit more efficient. And yeah, that was pretty much the idea about Thank it. Thank you very much, Isabel. Thank you very much, Team NP 2.0. <laughs> Thank you for nice insights. Please go back to your seats. And the audience, we have listened to five different presentations now. We have got five different ideas and approaches for teams which represent the same company, the same 
imaginary NP company. All of those guys had the same resources at the beginning of their work. They had the same obstacles on their way, the same risks. Their ideas alone made the difference. And it will be certainly very difficult for our esteemed Judiciary Committee to come to a conclusion which team did its job better. Anyway, we have another part of our contest, which is a kind of blitz tournament. So I have first to explain the idea of the blitz tournament to you. This is a unique option for the audience to take part. We will have six questions. It's a multiple choice adventure. You have three possible answers, three opportunities to answer. One is a correct one and two others are incorrect. You can gain five points for each correct answer. And each team, or all the teams together, because we will do it simultaneously on all the five tables, will get 30 seconds of time for a team discussion. It's not a huge potential for discussion, but it's, I think it's enough to answer those questions. The incorrect question is rated with zero points, and there is an option to vote for the audience. Uh, may I ask you if you've got those voting um, devices? The audience, do you have them? All of you or just those who decided to vote? Oh, thank you, thank you. So let me explain. Each and every question has three possible answers, which are marked as A, B, and C. You have also buttons, A, B, and C, also some other ones, but you don't need them. Just press the appropriate button after you made your selection. We will have the results afterwards, and we'll just compare, let's say, the amount of luck and the amount of knowledge we had in the audience and on our tables. So I will now have a, um, a little difficulty to combine three, oh, sorry, four different things in my two hands <laughs> since I have a hand microphone. Um, but I think we will be able to do this job anyway. So I will now show you the first question. Then I'll say go. 30 seconds, start. After 30 seconds, I say stop and ask teams to hold up their scorecards, which are also marked with A, B, and C. We start with the first question, which reads, what is the length of the longest underwater gas pipeline? Okay, thank you. What is the length of the longest underwater gas pipeline Nord Stream? Is it A, 1,124 kilometers? Is it B, 5,200 kilometers? Or is it C, 3,541 kilometers? And now go. Five seconds left. Stop and please hold up your cards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The assistants, please note the answers. Thank you.
And the right answer was A. All of our teams <laughs> knew the right answer. Well done, guys. Great job. Our audience um, had another preference. Our audience uh, thought it would be C. Um, to be honest with you, first time as I read the questions, um, okay, it was already marked as correct or incorrect, but I would say C. I'm with you guys, but it's wrong, unfortunately. Okay, our next question will be which of the market oil crudes does not exist? Is it A, the West Texas Intermediate? Is it B, the Dubai crude? Or is it C, the grass crude? Go. Five seconds to go. Stop. Please hold up your cards. B, C, 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 C. Assistants, please note the answers of the teams. And now we get the answers of the audience. They say it's C, definitely. And the correct answer is C. There is no grass crude on the market. Thank you, guys. Let's proceed to the next question. What percentage of taxes, of taxis in South Korea are using liquid gas fuel approximately? Is it A, 50%, a half? Is it B, 70%? Or is it C, 99%? Now go. Please hold up your cards. B, C, B, A, C. And what is the answer of our audience? You don't trust South Koreans. You don't trust them to be, let's see, pioneers in, in liquid gas, in their cars, in their taxis. Why don't you trust them? The right answer, the correct answer would be 99% of taxis in South Korea use LPG. In the process of uh, LNG production, natural gas is reduced in volume to 200 times, it's the answer A, or B, 400 times, or C, 600 times. Go. Stop. Please hold up your cards. C, 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 A, and B. And what was the answer of our audience? Oh, our audience also suggested C. And this is the correct answer. Now, when did the first Russian oil pipeline Balahani, Cherny Gorod started functioning. Was it A in 1878? Was it B in 1828? Or was it C in 1910? Go. Stop. Stop and hold up your cards, guys. A, 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 A. And what is the audience going for? It's also more or less A. And this is the correct answer. As most of you probably know, the first industrial oil started in the mid middle of the 19th century, and there are two countries in the world which claim to be first. Um, do we have somebody from Azerbaijan here, or maybe from US? Don't get in um, in competition. We really don't know who of the which of those countries was really the first one. Okay, and our last question for this tournament is in which country in the second century salt and natural gas were mined 
from the several hundred meters deep offshore wells? Was it A, in China? Was it B, in India? Or was it C, in Peru? Go. A, 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 and once again A. And what was the, oh yes, and our audience also voted for A. You are right. It was in China. It was in China. Thank you very, very much. I can't see it. I have to stand. So we had a discussion. First of all, we are very pleased of your participation, presentation, question answering, your bright ideas, sometimes maybe not realistic, but very exciting. So all of you are the winners, and uh, well done, guys. That's my first statement. And then we have the score for the presentation, for the Blitz. And actually, I, would, uh, I didn't expect myself and uh, the members of the jury not to be prepared for the Blitz. And some questions were very difficult for us as well. So <laughs> we all need to learn more for the whole of our professional career. Uh, so it's uh, presentation, Blitz, and additional... Uh, ranking from uh, jury. So the total uh, uh, of the ranking in our final list is NP2020 uh, is having 65 points. <clears throat> Team Orange, 71 point. Family, 76. <laughs> Team Fungastic, 78. <laughs> and the winner is Neft, 85. <laughs> Congratulations. And we'd like, the jury members would like to comment on each of the team's activity briefly for you to learn some lessons of what you've done today, right or wrong. So we start from NP2. Okay, let me start. Uh, I'd like to say thank you for all your guys. It is very interesting and um, I, I, I'm very excited. And th this is, for me, it was the first uh, in experience. I don't know uh, uh, your situation, but it, it is very interesting. As for the uh, team NP 2.0, very good team, very nice presentation. Uh, you know, oil and gas business uh, is uh, uh, man's business. But in this uh, team, there is a very beautiful lady, very smart lady, a real leader, who made a very good presentation. I think that uh, you have a very bright future in our business. Not very, not very easy, I might say, very difficult. So good luck, guys. I'll comment on Team Orange. Thank you very much for a well done presentation and for a very interesting business case you developed. Your presentation was very lively. Everybody in your team was involved in presenting. Uh, you were the team who addressed the real business issues like prices, spreads, uh, the most of all teams. That's something I like very much. Uh, you addressed the risks, but I think it was not enough because it is very risky what you proposed. Uh, I think the, the right way forward, what you're doing, looking at business cases, looking at prices, because we live from prices and margins, and I, I see a bright future for you in the commercial business. Thank you. Family. So I, I will comment on the uh, family. So that was a good presentation. The, we really enjoyed the, the, the good idea to move well the other one, don't think about going. It's counterintuitive. It's out of the mainstream. It was really much appreciated. However, two points that we felt uh, were a little bit missing in this, uh, in this good, not necessarily totally viable, but good idea, 
is A, the risk on the environment. Uh, that was a big issue and it was a little bit set on the side. So if, we, if a management is going to take that kind of risks, it needs to understand them. And the second point, uh, which could have been made better in the presentation, is you proposed three strategies, good ones, but we would have liked to have a proposal, to have uh, some recommendation on which strategy would be best suited to the company. So that being said, uh, very, good, uh, very good analysis and quite a clever idea. Thank you. Team Van So my German colleague did something on the Russian, the Dutch team, I do something on the German team, which is in this case fantastic, of whatever you want to call it. Uh, I think it's a very balanced uh, presentation. You did it as a team trying to overlap, trying to find the right propositions. Also here, what already has said by FIP, business cases belong also to the domain of prices, which is extremely difficult. Your team was trying to do something in that respect. Uh, so a very balanced presentation, also including prices. Maybe we had a little bit the feeling that you were taking a lot of slides from a general presentation. Maybe you went on the right way, but maybe you should do it more in your own words, in your own setting, in such a way that it is even more powerful in the presentation. But well done, I think, uh, received uh, the second prize. So in this case, I think it's a perfect presentation and well done. And I'd like to comment on the winners. It's not easy. I'm not going to criticize you. You were balanced, brief, straight to the point, good analysis. But the most important thing for, for us that you acted as a team. Each member was participating in the presentation, answering the questions. So well done, guys. And uh, most of the people would like to employ all of you. If we have an option, we'll employ all of you. But this team is the best. Congratulations and good luck. So, dear friends, as now we know who is the winner. We probably may ask ourselves, ourselves what will we not get? <laughs> I kindly ask Mr. Khamekov to come to the stage and explain us what is the grand prize. Mr. Khamekov is the deputy chairman of the managing board of Gazprom. Я сердечно приглашаю господина Сергея Федоровича Хомякова на сцену для вручения главного приза и объявления. Thank you very much. I ask all take devices for translation, please. I will speak Russian. Okay? Do you don't have any? Thank you, thank you. I will speak Russian. Okay. У нас замечательный приз. Прежде всего, я бы хотел поблагодарить жюри. Большое спасибо за работу. Я думаю, это была лучшая команда сегодня. Никто с этим спорить не будет. Во главе с капитаном, конечно. Большое спасибо. У нас очень интересные соревнования прошло. Соревновались... Те люди, которые считают энергетическую отрасль своим будущим. И, естественно, Гран-при должен отвечать этим желаниям. Гран-при у нас заключается в следующем. Команда победитель приглашается нашими фирмами. Это Газюни и Гастера, ИОН и Газпром побыть и поработать на этих фирмах по три дня, в то время, когда это будет удобно. Чтобы вы представляли свое будущее, как это выглядит. Я не могу за ИОН сказать, и Газью, не Гастеру. Скажу за Газпром, где это будет. Это будет месторождение Заполярное, далеко за полярным кругом. Но это действительно там, где мы добываем газ. Это очень интересно. Это самое большое месторождение, которое дает газ половине Европе и всей стране. 
Дорогие друзья, я вас поздравляю с этой большой победой. Я думаю, что в будущем мы обязательно учтем, как вы здесь сражались. Еще раз приглашаю всех на работу в «Газпром». Это не значит, что все должны подняться и сразу переходить в «Газпром». Это так, так не будет. Со временем работаем, учимся, добиваемся успехов. I invite you, Alson, to join us in Gazprom. Уважаемый Сергей Федорович, если вы позволите, для команд, которые не имеют наушников, я кратко переведу ваши слова на английский язык, поскольку иностранные нашей команды, очевидно, не поняли всего. Последние они поняли точно. Пожалуйста. Благодарю вас. Окей, okay. just short summarizing for our not Russian speaking teams. The prize for the winner is an internship at three comp uh, in three countries and um, I cannot say about what will happen in Germany with E.ON and in, uh, also Netherlands but I can tell you what will happen at Gazprom. You will go to our gas field Zapalarne. This is a real gas field where we really produce gas. So you will see how the business works. And I invite all of you to join us at Gazprom. It is, um, let's say, a place to have future. Наверное, уже пора заканчивать этот действительно сложный двухдневный марафон. Уважаемые друзья, уважаемые коллеги, большое спасибо за работу. То, что происходило вчера и сегодня, показывает, что такие встречи просто необходимы. Они необходимы не только нам, работодателям, которые отбирают лучших из лучших. Я думаю, можно уже переводить. Почему удобно с переводчиком? Они переводят всегда лучше, чем говоришь. Thank you. Но самое важное, что мы обязательно учтем в будущем, мы будем продолжать такие же мероприятия, скажем так, и соревнования, это чтобы вы посмотрели друг на друга. Через несколько лет вам вместе работать на этом сложном энергетическом рынке. И вы будете делать будущее и Европы, и всего мира в энергетике. Желаю вам прекрасного будущего. Энергетическое будущее, оно всегда-всегда прекрасное. Спасибо. The most important thing that you can learn at, this, at such kind of event is to work with each other, to cooperate, because some years later you will cooperate once again, not as students in the contest, but in your real business, in your real work. And it will help you to cooperate successfully within Europe and all over the world. So I wish you a bright, energized, energetic future. Thank you. И, насколько я понимаю, наше сегодняшнее мероприятие закрыто. So, as far as I understand, we close. Да, но перед тем, как закрыто, надо вручить сертификат. Надо. Команда победитель, выйдите сюда, пожалуйста. But before we close the event, we have to invite the winning team on the stage to get their prize. As all the prizes are already handed over, I ask kindly 
for all the teams to stand up and get to the foot of the stage after we make this photo to make a joint photo of all the participants of this contest. Come on, guys. Come closer, please. Make it easier to the photographers, please.